Hello everybody, my name is Ghost, and today we will be interviewing the owner of Prehistoric Age, Trippy. How you doing? Good, how about you? Good. Alright, so I have a series of questions, both personal and for the game itself. So are you ready to start? Yeah, I'm, I'm ready. Alright, question number one. How do you think the growth system will work? Will it take, like, as... Like, what do you think would be a good estimate to a decent growth time? If that makes sense. So, yeah. So, basically, for our game, we wanted a medium... So, right in the middle. So, not too long of a growth time, not too short of a growth time. So... I would say most dinosaurs should take up to 45 to 45 minutes to an hour to grow. Bigger dinosaurs would probably take up to an hour and a half to possibly two hours, depending on how. Smaller dinos would take up to like 15 to 20 minutes. So uh, the growth time, growth will basically just be set on um, basically just as long as you're playing and as long as you're moving around or you could just be sitting AFK it will tick on the growth timer. There will be certain attributes to increase your growth time. For example, you could be like, if you ate a certain type of berry, you could, um, you, your growth timer would be increased. So you can, you, by doing these certain options, you can um, increase the, uh, decrease the amount of time it takes to grow yourself. We are implementing this so it will allow players to go ahead and want to play the game and not actually just sit there and be afk because uh, you know so you you'd say this growth is compared would you say this growth is comparable to some creatures in a dino sim um i would say yes because in dino sim by the way one of my favorite games love mm -hmm. dino sim um dino sim in their growth system their growth system consists of um you basically just sit and you grow and you can't really do anything to increase the timer of the grow or anything so in what we do in our game is doing certain um things can increase or decrease your growth timer and it's not just decreasing your growth timer if you don't do certain things like if you eat a certain berry that's not healthy to your herbivore by the way some herbivores will have a certain diet that they will require so if you eat a berry that herbivore doesn't like it will give you certain attributes like increased growth timer mm. same thing for carnivores and omnivores oh so it like it implements a dietary system so where you have to like Yet again, you have to understand the creature's diet and everything in order to properly use it. Correct. So, for example, for a carnivore, let's say Spinosaurus. Uh, Spinosaurus is a fish eater. So eating a carcass from a land dinosaur, for example, eating a carcass of Gallimimus, that will increase its growth timer. So that means it will take longer to grow. But eating fish or raw fish or certain types of creatures that are uh, aquatic, you will decrease that growth timer. And um, if you were already at your max growth and you ate something that was out of your diet, would that affect you at all? It wouldn't affect your growth. It will all Once you hit max, you're hitting max and you can't decrease down. Yeah. So once you've hit max, eating certain diets will have other effects. For example, you could lose um, speed or your stamina, you could lose stamina uh, you could lose health, you could lose hunger, and you can lose thirst from doing those actions. Oh, so like certain foods, like for another example, how I thought it would be. So where like if you eat certain things, it wouldn't give as much food as your preferred diet. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or sometimes if you eat the wrong thing, it'll actually decrease your food instead of increasing it. Ah. Okay then. So... The next question. I was over on the prehistoric age map and I noticed a lot of grass in certain areas. Will that, um, will that be like rigged or animated at all to where it will like move? Um, will there's no plans of having an animation for grass, but that's definitely something we can look into. But as of right now, no, it'll just be plain grass. Ah. Speaking of grass, will certain herbivores be able to eat the grass? 
So um, we were thinking of a grazing system. So basically grazing, you'll have a button, you hold it down, and basically over time you'll gain food and happiness. So, or not happiness, but um, uh, you will decrease your growth timer because that makes your dinosaur happy. So when the more, so this is what the happiness um, means. So happiness is basically when you do an action um, that your dinosaur is happy about, you'll get, and uh, you know benefits so benefits can be like uh decrease you're faster mm -hmm. yeah or decrease growth time exactly so those are that's the happiness kind of thing with the um, thing so you want to keep your dinosaur so the, the main attributes for your dinosaur your creature you want to be able to keep it either happy you want to keep it healthy you want to keep it um hungry i mean not hungry but hungry. well fed you want to keep it well well thirst you know Mm -hmm. You want to keep all those attributes, and that will make your, your creature happy. Well, alrighty then. So, next question. With Avius's roar, and I uh, saw this while um, doing the first video. With its roar, there are some things that um, make the roar not as good as it could be. Will it be reanimated? Because if we look at the roar, the throat pouch sticks through the mouth and the rest of the body stays mm -hmm. still. Will that be fixed or remade? So yeah. So that is actually in the process of being fixed by my head developer, um, uh, Bird Nerf here. Wonderful uh, person, by the way. She's been doing amazing on our project so far. She's exactly why she's promoted to head developer. Um, she is actually the person in charge of doing that stuff for Avias. So I've actually already messaged her and she's in the process of Fixing the throat pouch, uh, fixing the T posing and the animations. In development, I put known issues. Known issues, T posing when using animations, and our text script not working. So you'll have an update soon where we'll have um, on the testing, where you'll have um, the throat pouch fixed. So the throat pouch won't be sticking out, it'll be staying on the bottom of the jaw. And we'll also have an animation where the um, T posing is fixed. Yeah, and the T posing is fixed. So you see how when he eats, his tail kind of T poses. Wait. So that'll be fixed. Oh. Yeah. And we'll also see how you can do this by spamming E or something. Yeah. That'll be fixed to where it'll have a cooldown. So when you eat, you can't replay the animation. So once it's set, you're stuck doing this and you can't stop until it's done. So you can't be you won't be able to do this unfortunately i know a lot of people like this little laugh it does <laughs> yeah it's nice and of avius another thing on avius um are these little fourth toes supposed to be like that one shrunken down toe that most creatures have yeah the fourth toe on its kind of leg mm -hmm. sticking out yeah yeah, that's supposed to be a shrunken down toe. So, I guess what you could say is like in evolution, it's been going through a lot of evolution because it's a hybrid. So, it probably got it from one of its hybrids. For example, um, Velociraptor, I believe, has that little shrunken down toe. I know it has the big toe. That well, most theropods has. do. Well, most yeah. theropods have that um, vestigial remnant, I think it's called. Yes, yeah. Like how whales lost their limbs in... Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, next question, and this is more of a kind of nitpick, but have you noticed that the waterfall over there is going a bit to the side? Yeah, so <laughs> this was made by a bird, and this isn't the actual map, as you know, yes. this is a testing map, so... Mm -hmm. I don't think we'll be correcting anything on this map since it's just a little testing map, but, uh, yeah. Okay, so, on the testing map, there are these little bird things. Are you able to elaborate on what they are? Are they like a starter? So, this is one of the mythical creatures. It's actually, if you look it up, this is called a cockatrice. Mm -hmm. So, if I go and look it up, sorry about the keyboard. So, a cockatrice... Oh, is a mythical beast, essentially a two-legged dragon or serpent-like creature with a rooster's head. So if you can look, 
it's got of course like a serpent's body it's got the kind of two legs and it's got a rooster's head so this is actually a cockatrice so in the mythical strain we are actually striving to bring back some mythical creatures from the real world back to life for example you'll have uh werewolves so werewolves will definitely be something that we're going to be having in the mythical strain and not just mythicals from like legend and stuff in the real world we'll be implementing our own mythical creatures ah and mm -hmm. will the strains be limited because there's also going to be regular dinosaurs like will the starters be the only viable ones or will they all be viable so they will all be so let me explain strains for anyone that does not know what a strain is so a strain is basically a category in how we're categorizing our uh, creatures so you have four strains as of right now we have the prehistoric where you'll find dinosaurs mythical where you'll find more of the legends and made up guys you'll find otherworldly which is the alien creatures and then you have ragnarok which are the life and death creatures that represent life and death mm -hmm. um so basically strains are basically how we're categorizing each strain has four sections and three um uh under sections so you have four sections so you can either pick your starters your normals your apexes and your strain keeper so no starters are the starter creatures that you can find in a strain when you first begin a strain you can pick either a carnivore a starter a herbivore starter or an omnivore starter so those are the uh, three stars you can choose from after you're done with your starter and you unlock your first normal creature you'll have either a normal carnivore a normal herbivore normal normal omnivore and so on you get to cre you you're, you get to use your mind to look around and peek around at what you want to choose um, after that you have your apexes there are three apexes each one representing a diet carnivore herbivore omnivore and then of course you have your strain keeper which the strain keepers are um well for example avius strain keepers are the sh strongest uh, creatures in the game avius is a strain keeper of the prehistoric it is a hybrid of multiple uh dinosaurs, dinosaurs. yes you can tell by its tail, it's got the Spinosaurus kind of sail, kind of. Mm -hmm. It's got uh, spikes on its head. It's got the spikes from, I think, I believe, a, not a stego, but... Down its dorsal. Yeah, dorsal. And then, of course, it's got an Ankylosaurus club, Velociraptor toes. Yeah, so it's got a lot of attributes from a dinosaur. I see. So... And uh, this is unscripted. I'm just trying to think of questions that I thought of overnight. So, <laughs> but, um, so is there, while well, we're on this, uh, is there any uh, thing you would be able to tell the public or at least me while doing this about the lore? So, lore as in the Avius, the lore of Avius? Well, just the lore of the game. Is there any lore of the game that you'd be able to tell publicly? So, I will say that... Well, let's start off with this. Lore is a big concept in our game. Everyone will start off with what's called the lore book. The lore book is where you'll keep all of your lore and you'll be able to read over for our PvEers out there that will want to know more about the game and know more about the creatures and the aisle that you stand on. So... Uh, I'll start off with a couple of little lores that I've got from my lore book that I've wrote down over the past couple of weeks. So let's go ahead and start off with um, Avius. So Avius is a creature made out of pure nightmare. It was a misinterpreted experiment and it was not supposed to be made. After many scientists and ruins of the chieftains of the Hakanui tribe, they had created this creature out of multiple dinosaurs. So these prehistoric tribes use these kind of you know rituals to f merge these creatures into what they believe is their god and try to make a you know a real life representation of their god and it failed miserably creating avius avius is a negatively born creature born out of you know born from a place where it's it doesn't know what's going on it's confused it's a confused creature it doesn't know how it got there and how it was made so therefore avius is very negative and very hateful so it's born out of rage 
So Avius is a creature that goes around and it's very, you know, it, it terrorizes everything in its den. So we haven't added it to the official map, but you can actually find the ruins and some lore book pages if you go into the ruins as a small creature and maybe dig around the houses. You can find these little pages, and these pages are called lore pages. And you can place them into your lore book, and you'll be able to know more about the lore. So basically, Avius was created from a failed experiment with the rituals of the tribes of the Hakanui. And basically, just, you know, that's how Avius was made, out of multiple dinosaurs that were captured and merged through these rituals. And that's how Avius was born. Yeah. And just a quick add-on, real quick, is Avius... Well, if Avius was considered a mistake, this is not how their god was interpreted. So, no. So okay. the lore behind that is their god is actually one of the other strain keepers. So if for any of you that are in the Discord, if you want to go ahead and maybe look around, yeah, their god is actually the Ragnarok strain keeper, and their god is called Kaval. So if any of you know what a Kaval is or want to go look for that, it is the god of life and death. And so you can go back into our development and you'll be able to find Caval. Caval is, I'll even, I'll send you a um, picture if you want to put it up in your video of Caval. It's a, you know, it's part light and part death. So I'll definitely send you a picture after this. Yeah. Okay then. So is there any other lore or do you want to keep it? cut off so that. i want to keep all the lore low key so i think i'll share only that just want to let you know that there will be a lot of lore in the game so just be looking out for that guys all right okay so with diets well with the ecosystem as a whole will there be will there be like a niche system where certain creatures uh... have certain roles in the environment so we don't want to go that deep into it but so you could say like um certain creatures will have their job of you know eating bushes and certain creatures will will the carnivores have their job of keeping the population low by eating creatures and not having all the big dinosaurs full grown running around the herbivores you know i feel like omnivores and carnivores are the real ones with the real roles I mean, herbivores, they keep the bushes uh, tended by eating the bushes, which is limiting the food for the omnivores and the herbivores. But besides that, it's mainly with the carnivores that are keeping the balance in the community by eating the other creatures and by keeping not a full, like, so the server doesn't have a bunch of full grown creatures. You got to give it off to the carnivores who are eating um creatures to ensure that it's not just a community of full-grown creatures i see so and will there be a limit to how many how many creatures of a certain thing like will there be because in primal earth right now which is another roblox game which is basically ancient earth there's been a little bit of a time recently where there's been like a sudden spike in like really limited like the really op limiteds suddenly just coming in and destroying servers will there be like a way to keep that in check to make sure that not too many really overpowered creatures will be in the game so i've actually really looked into this and i think and this is not confirmed at all but i'm thinking i'm gonna go over this in my administration but we're thinking about adding a amount of depending on what it is for example strain keepers so we'll have if there is already an avius in the server then there can only be one avius in the server but then again since there's growth we don't know if we want to add that but uh, that's something we're definitely looking into yeah and that makes sense because since there's no growth there's no way to really limit the population over there so with growth being a thing that certainly makes a difference. Exactly, yes. So, let me think. Is okay. Excuse me? You're breaking up. Sorry. Oh, um, I was trying to think of something, but, uh. So, for the water systems, will there be like. I know there's the big po lakes and oceans and stuff that we explored uh, yesterday. But uh, will there be any, how big would you say that the 
oceanic creatures will be compared to the water. So, the ocean is very big. And so we want to keep our creatures limited and kind of small compared to the ocean. So there's a lot of places to roam around. So, of course, most ocean creatures are as big as, you know, avias. Because, you know, as you know, most ocean creatures are meant to be huge. Mm -hmm. So, of course, we want to keep it big, but not too big. So they have a place to roam around in the ocean. So, you know, for our aquatic creatures... Um, they'll definitely have a lot of room to roam around the ocean. That's that's for sure. I see. So they're gonna be really big oceans. I take yes. So this is something that DS has had that I believe would be a good thing to ask. When you're flying and you run out of stamina, would you like? When you're flying and you're running low on stamina. Would you need to um, perch down? Like, would you need to have to land on the ground? Because when you run out of stamina while flying, you basically just lost the strength to flap your wings, and you would suddenly just fall to the ground. So would that be something implemented? Yes. So when you lose stamina from flying, it won't force you to go straight to the ground. Actually, it will. But when you run out of stamina when flying... Basically, what's going to happen is you're basically going to stop flapping. You're going to fall straight down. Um, I don't think fall damage will be implemented because I don't think that's something really hard to be able to implement when scripting. Because if a player's model decides to flip and go crazy and then fall down to the ground, it'll take fall damage and die. And that's really sucky. So we want. I don't think we'll be adding fall damage. So if when your stamina depletes, uh, you'll just fall to the ground and you won't take any um, non benefits. Ah. And I believe this is going to be one of the final questions. But so I already talked to you about this, but not here. So with Avius's uh, tail club and other creatures, will there be like certain critical hits or bone breaks? For example. So, so something that we're going to implement is definitely we're going to have um, second attacks. So one attack is, of course, the bite for Avius. So this is the eating animation. This is not the bite. So, of course, you'll have the bite for Avius. And then a second one will be, of course, the club where you can swing your club like this. But it will have an actual animation. Oh. So if I run over to you, I can actually smack you with my club. Oh. <laughs> I see. I see. So, yeah. But no, it won't be a spin like that. You'll actually have the animation of um, clicking, like, your right-click mouse. So your left-click will be bite. Right-click will be a tail swing. So you'll be able to swing your tail. I see. And will this speed glitch be taken out or will yes, some creatures will still have it this is because their hitbox is a little wonky right now but that's definitely going to be fixed mm. okay then and another talk on starters this creature is named a uh, starter character so basically is it like a starter so this is actually from another game that Bird is working on. This is not actually going to be implemented into our game. Ah. Uh, yeah. Okay. I, I gotta say, I really like this testing map, even if it's just testing. Yeah, exactly. Jeez. It's very nice. Made by Bird. Mm-hmm. And something that I also mentioned yesterday, and I believe this is the final question. We went over and we saw the Gallimimus from uh, the one thing and you talked to me about remodels so do you think sometime in the near future we'll get like really smooth models like DS or uh, Primal Earth um no so on our game we want to keep it semi blocky so the best you'll get from the remodels is a model like Avius this is a perfect example of what we're trying to create so I we want to keep it smooth but we want to keep it blocky at the same time. I see. And the model does look nice, I must say. Exactly, yeah. Well, alrighty then. I believe that is all, so... Alrighty.
so it was great talking to you. Alrighty, thank you so much for interviewing me. You are welcome. I will see you later. Okay, so, um, that was my interview with, um, Trippy, the, uh, game's owner. So if you'd like to, um, have more of these PA videos now that I've talked to him about some basic things for the game, um, feel free to comment and suggest things like it. I will, um, do more videos like this, like, um, walking through the map and some parts of it. And I will see y'all later. I've been Ghost, and bye.